this video, we will get familiar with the table buffer function, which is an excellent function that can dramatically increase query performance if you know where to use it. We will also debunk the each function at nested m iterations. We will also explain what is a row context in Power Query. Therefore, this is going to be a pretty educational video. First, let's see the business problem we wish to solve with Power Query. We will use an extract from the Contoso database for demonstration. In this query, category query, we have a brand name and a subcategory that the brand belongs to. Now in the other query, we only have information about the product and date and sales amount associated to that product on that date. What we want to accomplish is a partial matching function. We want to find brand names within the product name column and where we find a match, we want to return the segment of that brand. For example, for the first product in the table, this one, we want to filter the category table and search if any of these words, keywords, appear in the product name and if it appears, then filter out that row and return the corresponding subcategory. To show you what we actually want to accomplish, let's observe the following slide. So let's go to PowerPoint. So for the first row, we want to invoke a nested function that will filter through the uh, category table and then it will find the adventure works keyword. Therefore, all the other rows will be filtered out. Only the row with adventure works keyword will remain. And we want to push the television name of the subcategory to the corresponding row. And this iteration will happen for every row in the sales table. This task is only for the demonstration purposes. We could use fuzzy merging or even better perform this calculation in DAX with much better performance. But I find this example an excellent one for demonstrating how iterations work in Power Query. It also benefits greatly from using table buffer function. So overall, it is a great example for advanced Power Query. So let's implement this kind of a partial match using M language. Let's go back to Power Query and let's duplicate the sales table and let's call it sales partial match. Sales partial match. Now let's go to the add column option and let's add a custom column. Uh, for the column name, we'll call it a segment. And now in the function part, let's write table.select rows. And we want to select rows from category table. And we want to use a, a text. Product column in, I think it's the brand name. Brand name column. Let's close this. No syntax error. Cool. So we want to filter the rows of the category table so that only ones in which brand name and brand name is the name of the column of the category table. So we want to only do the ones in which brand name occurs in the product column to survive the filtering. So let's click on done. And as expected, we receive an error. And if we click on it, error states that the field brand name wasn't found in record. But wait, what? where have we even introduced a record in our function and which records is it? So let's go to the advanced editor to see what is happening here. So let's go to home. And let's go to advanced editor. 
first let's format the last step to get a clearer picture of what is happening. So now we should focus on the keyword each. Just enter this below and this one, keyword each. Each is a shortcut syntax for introducing an iterative function that is being invoked for each row in a table. So for each row in the sales table, this sales query, the same function will be invoked and that function is a call to a table select rows function. So this one. Now, functions are meant to provide an argument that is going to enter a function, but we do not see any argument entering functions. And that is because of the sugar syntax of the each keyword. If we remove the sugar syntax, the each expression can be written like this. So the each expression is actually expression formula invocation with an underscore parameter. Okay. So each is actually an unnamed variable holding a single argument called underscore. But what is the underscore argument holding? It is holding a record of the current row in the table. Let this thought rest a bit in your head since it's the most important part of this lecture. The underscore is holding a record of the current row of the iteration. That means that in this iteration, the underscore is holding the economy Silver Adventure Works desktop PC on a date uh, July the 3rd and with a value of 6,370. 6, in this row, the same record, the same underscore record is holding these three values or these three columns. And it's doing the same thing for every row in the table. And after the, we invoke this function with this uh, syntax, for each row of the table, we are doing a table select rows, which is an additional iterative function. And we want to access a product column from within this record. In case we use a default underscore symbol for nested function argument, then we can call a column from the record without the need of specifying the underscore before writing the name of the column. So we can omit this underscore. But both with or without underscore is acceptable. But we are not obligated to always use the underscore as an argument. We can provide any name we please as an argument for the function. So for instance, we can change this underscore to, let's say, outer variable. But in this case, we are obligated to include the name of that argument or, or that uh, record or of or that uh, variable that is entering the function before calling the column from that record. So we need to include the name of the variable entering or the variable that is holding the record of the current row before calling a column from that record. If we were to use default underscore, then we can omit this. And this is perfectly fine for Power Query. And at this moment, let's leave the variable as a default underscore. Now let's observe the nested table select rows function. First, we now understand why the function is giving an error stating that it cannot find the column brand name in the current record. The reason is that we are passing only a single record to this function. And that record consists of only three columns coming from the sales table. So we have only product, date, and sales amount com columns available. On the other hand, the brand name column is coming from the category table. So the brand name column is coming from the category table. But we haven't pushed any function containing category record to the table select rows one. Now we can see that we made a mistake. Table select rows is also an iterative M function 
meaning that it also needs each syntax in order to operate properly. So let's try to add each keyword and see if this will resolve our error. So let's go back to our query. Let's go to advanced editor. And now we will say state each. So now we will we know that table select rows in, is an iterative function. Therefore, it needs to iterate over the category table. And for each row, it needs to do the following condition. Okay, so now let's hope that everything will be fine. Let's click on done. And now we do receive, we no longer uh, receive an error. We do receive a table under a segment column. But if you click on it, we can see that they are all filled and with an error. And now we can see that the error is saying that now it cannot find the product column of the record. So before it was the brand name, now it's the product that is missing from the record. And now let's go back to the advanced editor to see what is happening. When we added additional each in a nested table select rows function, we created another iterated function that is pushing an underscore attribute to the current row of the nested iteration. If we remove the sugar syntax, this is happening. So we have an additional argument that is entering a nested, nested iteration. And now we, if we do the underscore prefix, now the inner iteration is using the same underscore argument as the outer one, resulting in conflict. The inner iteration is now trying to find the product column in a record holding the current row of the category table. And in the category table, there is no product column. So now, Text contains function is trying to find a product column in a category table or in the currently current row of the category table. And we can see that in category table, only brand name and subcategory columns are available. Therefore, this evaluation, this condition will evaluate to an error because it can't find the product column in a nested iteration of the category over the category table. Now, how to overcome this issue? We know that the underscore is the default keyword for iterating argument, but we are also allowed to provide our own name for the same argument or arguments. We can do that to differentiate the inner argument from the outer one. So now let's do that. So instead of Using the underscore, let's call this outer variable. And the outer variable is the variable of the iteration over the sales table, which has a product column. So we need to write the name of the outer variable before reaching the column from that record, from that record of iteration. And for the inner, we could leave it like this, it will work. But for the demonstration purposes and for making it more clear, we will also name our variable, our inner iteration as inner variable. And now this inner variable, we need to change the prefix of the current, of the column name of the inner iteration of the category table to the inner variable and the inner variable is holding the record of the current iteration over the category table. Now we can properly link the column names of the records with the right inner and outer iteration. And if we click on a done, and now we can see that we do receive a table and if we expand it, we see that we do receive a column, a brand name that was recognized inside of this uh, product, uh, product name and subcategory associated with this, with this brand. 
Now the last part is about the table buffer. Nested iterations are very problematic in Power Query since they have a huge impact on the query loading speed. If we were to load this query to the data model as is, it would take a couple of minutes to load. What we can do and should do every time we have nested iterations is to try to use table buffer function to push the nested iteration into a memory and optimizing its performance. There is also a list buffer and binary buffer that work on the same principle. And what is the principle? It's the principle of storing a table, list or a binary object in RAM, making it a stable reference isolated from external changes during evaluation. That means faster reads of data and faster performance. In our case, it would be a good idea to push the category table to the memory by encapsulating it with a table buffer function. So let's go back to our advanced editor. Remember not to simply wrap the table buffer when the table is already nested. So for instance, table buffer. If we use table buffer in this part of the code, this will not work because that will push the table to memory on each iteration. Therefore, we will gain, experience no performance gain. Uh, we, we could e even uh, suffer from a uh, bad, uh, worsen performance. You have to create a variable outside of the inner iteration and push that to the buffer function. So we have to add an additional variable. Let's call it, let's give it a name buffered table and let's cut this one. So now we dimmed a buffered table variable outside of the iteration and now we will bring back the buffered variable from within to the to the inner part of iteration. And now the table is properly buffered and we can expect a huge performance boost from it. And it also works correctly when we click on done. Lastly, let's talk about when to use buffering options. General use cases are when your table or list will be referenced multiple times, for example, in list generate function, something that you will do in later videos, whenever using a recursive function, before merging in cer certain situations, or before passing tables to functions. Be careful when using buffering with foldable sources since buffering breaks query folding which can result in worsened performance. Also, if your tables are big, think twice before buffering because Power Query works with a limited working set meaning it limits the amount of data it stores in RAM. Anything over that limit gets temporarily stored on the hard drive which is much slower to access than RAM. Storing too much in RAM with buffering could lead to trashing, where data is frequently being stored and read from the disk into the RAM and vice versa, which can potentially decrease query performance. Now to conclude, table buffer is kind of a wild beast. You never know if it will produce a fast result, so it's a bit of a trial and error. But when it does hit, it hits hard and you can expect to increase the loading speeds multiple times. So whenever you encounter a decrease in performance, try to utilize the buffering option. Where buffering is not a solution or you should think twice before using it, if you use table buffer as a first step before referencing it for three different queries, the data that is buffered cannot be shared between separate query executions. So the buffering happens three times, once for each time the reference query is evaluated. Also, when you're working with foldable sources, that, then you should think twice if you should use uh, the buffering option, because after that, no folding occurs. This is all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, please post them down below and we will see you in the next video. Bye.